let's start off with a question. If a company has millions of customers and we have information on those customers, such as their birth date, their credit card information, their address, and other personally identifiable information, if that information is stolen from us and it's leaked out to the wild, is that a problem? And the answer is, that's a huge problem on a lot of levels. Let's take a closer look. For our little case study, let's imagine we have two hotel companies. They're both pretty big. One is actually called the Massive Hotel Incorporated, MHI for short, and the other is called Big Hotels Inc. Still big, but not quite as big as Massive, and its acronym is BHI. Now, hotels are gonna have a reservation system. That's how they get people in, they book rooms and so forth, and they also collect information about their guests. Let's consider some of the things they might collect as part of the reservation system. They would have the names, uh, birth dates perhaps, email addresses, phone numbers, credit card information. Now organizations that process credit cards are under some requirements and regulations regarding protecting credit card information. So perhaps in the reservation systems, they're doing encryption, which is great. They're encrypting the credit card information. That way if that data is stolen, the attackers, they can see just gobbledygook. It's all encrypted. They won't actually be able to get the numbers. Now, from a compromise or attack perspective, that information, even without the credit card, could be really valuable. It could be valuable to be sold on the dark web as far as addresses and phone numbers and so forth. Or there could be a foreign country or a state actor who wants that data regarding the reservation systems to know where people are going, where do they stay, what's their profile, where are they staying next. And that could be valuable intelligence as well. So in this scenario, there was an acquisition and the Big Hotels Inc was acquired by Massive Hotels Inc, which made that even bigger. Until they do the merge of the data and the reservation systems, they're still gonna run two simultaneous reservation systems. Now, as part of the acquisition of Big Hotels Inc becoming part of Massive Hotels Inc, I'm sure there was a whole bunch of work and effort done by a lot of great people, including the finances, the logistics, the security, and everything else. However, one of the big challenges is this. If there are weaknesses or vulnerabilities in the reservation system from Big Hotels Inc. that's now under Massive Hotels Inc., Massive Hotels Inc. is now taking on the liability and the risk of any vulnerabilities. So it makes sense to spend some time and energy with doing security audits and analyzing the reservation systems for the soon to be acquired company just to make sure there aren't gaping holes or problems with that system. Now, oftentimes when there is a security breach and credit card or other information is stolen, people report it. So if we have people all over the country who are reporting that their credit card was stolen or their identity was stolen, sometimes the government will step in and they all have something in common. A few years ago, it was Target. And that's how Target was notified. They were notified by the government that all these people that have been compromised, their cards, uh, they have a commonality and that's you, Target. And then they identified the problem and then they went to fix it. Well, in this scenario with Massive Hotels Inc., there was a security monitoring tool that identified an unauthorized login attempt to the reservation system. So they were able, that's great news. We want to know when stuff is happening. And they identified this unauthorized login attempt and the analyst got in there and started taking a closer look at what was happening. And what they discovered was, is that the personally identifiable information, including names and birthdates and emails and phone numbers were stolen. And it wasn't 100,000, it wasn't a million, it wasn't 10 million, it was 500 million records were stolen. And also, as they continued to investigate, they discovered that the attackers actually had gotten in and gotten their foothold about four years ago. And that's a long time for an attacker or hacker to have access to a system without detection. So that's, that's good on the attacker. And an attacker's goal is not unlike a politician. So a politician has two major objectives, and that is to get elected, and the second is to stay elected. Well, an attacker wants to get access, and then they want to maintain access for as long as possible. And if we think about what an attacker or a hacker could do for four years in a system, it's pretty devastating. And so as it turns out, what the attackers were doing is they were taking data, including the database and the records, and they were sending it out so they could actually make use or collect that data externally. Now, one of the questions might be, well, <laughs> how, do, how do you get all that data out? Remember, records, if they're text or small, they don't take up a lot of space. And so what the attackers did was they took the data and they encrypted it. Encryption is a great thing. So they scrambled the data. So things like firewalls and packet analyzers, if they're looking at the data, if it's encrypted, they can't make sense of it. 
And then with the data encrypted very likely into smaller chunks, then they sent it out. And how could they send it out? Well, they could have emailed it to an innocent looking destination email address, email by email, and then collected the encrypted contents and reassembled it. Another option besides using email is they could hide it in other protocols. They could hide it in ICMP and just very rarely do pings out to a destination, but the payload inside that ICMP packet actually has the encrypted bits that can be reassembled or they could hide it in an HTTP session using TCP port 80 or they could put it into HTTPS which is using TCP port 443, trying to make it look like innocent traffic and not a lot of quantity, and that way it can bypass any data loss prevention systems that the organization may have in place, looking for things like credit card numbers and social security numbers and any other kind of sensitive information that they don't want leaked out. But because of the encryption and tunneling that traffic, the data loss prevention systems, whether they're dedicated devices or built into the firewall, they didn't catch it. And then as the analysts continued to dig into the problem and see what happened, they discovered that even though the credit card information was encrypted in the reservation system, the attackers had discovered the keys, <laughs> which allowed the attackers to take that encrypted credit card information and decrypt it. And then the company gets to deal with damage control. Who's going to be affected? Are customers going to leave? Probably. Are customers going to sue? Probably. Is the government or other governments around the world going to fine this organization for not taking proper care of that data? Yes. And regarding some governments and fining companies that don't take care of the data and don't protect it, they could fine like 4% of their global revenue in fines. Now, another question we want to ask ourselves is, does this really happen? I mean, is it really this big of a problem? And the answer is absolutely yes. Let's take a look. To help demonstrate this point, there's a really great website. It's called informationisbeautiful.net. And one of the options they have there is the world's biggest data breaches and hacks. And as that floats in, we have some filtering we can do. We can click on data sensitivity and it's color coded. And then we can further filter by clicking on the filter option. And then we can filter based on, was it due to hacking? Was it an inside job, a lost device, oops, or poor security? And if we click on hacked, we're gonna see that most of these breaches were due to attacks and hacks. And then as we hover over these, it'll give us more details. And so <laughs> here's Marriott Hotels. I'm not picking on anybody. I'm just going for one of the biggest circles here. And this is actually the attack I talked about in our real world scenario, where 500 million records were compromised. It was discovered in late 2018, and it was identified that the compromise of the system began way back in 2014. And because there are so many people involved in so many breaches around the world, I'd also like to point out one other great site, and that is haveibeenpwned.com. This site right here, if you do a Google search for Have I Been Pwned and take the main hit for this main website, it'll take you right there. And because we use our email address for a username for so many sites, if we put in a username here, it'll give us a list of compromises where that email was found which should encourage us to go and change the passwords at those sites and also to not use the same password at multiple sites. Because if our password is compromised one place and we use that same password everywhere else or many other places, we can consider our security at those other sites very vulnerable as well. So I'm gonna use a fictitious name here like Bob Smith at yahoo.com and just click on pwned with a question mark and it'll come back and tell me whether or not it's been compromised. And look at that, <laughs> pwned on 55 breach sites and found in 17 pastes. And if we scroll down, so a tool like this would help an individual identify that, holy schnikers, my information has been compromised. And that way we can take action in making sure we're using unique passwords, using password managers, and being more careful about our information on the web. In this video, we've taken a look at a real world scenario and identified how devastating it could be to an organization in the event of a security breach. I hope this has been informative for you and I'd like to thank you for viewing.